Howdy folks, Lyft here, and I wanted to show you this division of a sphere program that I made because it's kind of cool. So the idea is I wanted to see what would happen if you try to divide up the area, the surface of a sphere evenly in three dimensions, that is. So not like, you know, you're just taking a knife and slicing an orange from the top kind of thing, but actually, you know, spreading out the points on the surface of a sphere in various directions and so I wanted to show you the results which is pretty cool and so I've got several different display modes here that we can go through and we can see what the results are so yeah we're gonna check it out and so the cool thing is this does make some of the as you see here some of the platonic solids and it also you know the thing that I really wanted to see was you know what happens when you use a number that isn't evenly divisible, you know. Uh, so you get some interesting things because a lot of, you know, you can find a lot of uh, existing solids on like Wikipedia and other, you know, nerdy sites, uh, math sites and stuff like that. But what you don't find is, you know, the numbers that don't fit in. So I added quite a few features on this on this program so we're going to go through those two and for those of you who want to play with it yourself it is available on github i wrote it in c sharp using opengl for the display and so anyway we're going to look through a couple of these things because it's pretty cool so we're going to start with the four vertices and what's what i find really interesting here is that it's i like how it just finds a way to uh to do some cool stuff like this like when you get the five. So the other thing I should probably explain here is that these red lines are the longer, they're different distances. So the blues are the shortest distance between vertices and within like 1% of accuracy. And then the there are yellow lines that you'll find and the yellow lines are the medium length and then these are up to one and a quarter. The red lines are up to one and a quarter of the distance. But what's pretty interesting is like here you'll get the D10. And you know, for those of you who <laughs> know what I'm talking about, 10-sided die. But yeah, it's now since these are forced to the surface of a sphere, it's not exactly the same shape as a regular D10 because these would be equilateral triangles, I believe, on a D10. They would I'm not sure. I don't know. They might even they might even stretch them out and make them longer. But anyway there's that and you get some interesting things so here here is one of the first things that I ran into that surprised me because what I expected was I expected I'd get all the platonic solids and my original idea was I was gonna see if there were any you know like larger number of vertices like really huge numbers that still divided out evenly and made some cool new solid that that was undiscovered or whatever and I'll explain later why <laughs> why that doesn't work but um yeah so here's here's one of the interesting things here is you get instead of a cube when you do eight vertices instead of a cube you get this now if we go back there is also this is one of the platonic solids it's an octahedron which is six vertices and so what you can do though is you can take this one of the features i added is you can lock the vertices in position and i believe if we go up to here there we go we go to eight vertices and now and it doesn't like to draw the faces obviously because it only looks for triangles I'm not sure why that would be obvious to you but <laughs> it's yeah it's only looking for triangles so it doesn't draw quads at this point but yeah as you see here you can make a cube but as soon as you unlocked the vertices and if there's any kind of movement on it it won't uh, it won't actually stay it falls back into this stable state and so the next one up there's there's kind of some interesting interesting shapes on here so you'll get some weird uh some weird things going on which is what i found really fun about it and what we're going to do is we're going to lock one of the vertices to the top so that we get a top let me unrotate this there we go so that we get a top okay a top thingy and to make it easier to to stay oriented so what's interesting about this is like so you have an odd number of vertices that doesn't really perfectly divide into you know 
like I said, a platonic solid. But what's interesting is you still end up with these cool symmetries, like, you know, from from this, you have this band of these going around, and then on the top and the bottom, you have this triangle. And so you have that triangle, and then it goes around like this. And this is the, the stuff that I really loved about how this came out. And so let's go to the next, we'll turn on the auto rotation, the slow auto rotation. And so you get a bunch of stuff like that. So on this one, you can see the same kind of thing. Let's see if we can find it. So we can reset. There we go, we get a nice one there. So you can see the same sort of thing here is you have this band going across the middle and then you have this stuff on the top. You have the square pyramid on the top and the bottom with the bands going across the middle. It's just, it's just pretty cool stuff. And we can turn the rotation back on. With this one, I always get a basket. I call it a basket. <laughs> but yeah, so we got 11 and 12 obviously is the icosahedron, which is pretty cool. And so there's a 20, for those of you who know the platonic solids, we're almost there. Um, there is a 20. So if we go to 20 vertices, what's interesting is they don't align like that. They don't align into a, um, what is it called? A dodecahedron. But the other thing that you can do in order to get this to happen, so it's it's what's interesting is, before I go back, is that you get these, I believe it's three, yeah, it's three holes. So let's see if we can get it to align on, let's turn off the rotation here, see if we can get it to align on the top, maybe. There we go, no, see if we can get them in a band around the around the equator, yeah, like that. So you get, again, you get this symmetrical thing going on, which is kind of cool. But if we go back to the 12, I believe it is, and we should be able to lock these in position. And 20, is that gonna do it? I don't remember if 20 is gonna, there we go. Okay, so now if we go to, nope, it's not gonna, it's not gonna help us find them. <laughs> I know there's a way to do the 20. Okay, I figured it out. You start with four vertices. You lock them in place. You go up to eight and so that you can make a cube and you lock those in place. And then you should be able to go to 20 and check this out on the way there. Check out this 14, how cool does that look? That's pretty neat. And you only get that if you lock the cube in place. If you don't lock the cube, it doesn't work. So let's go back up to 20 and you get what? <laughs> and actually this time it didn't do it. And sometimes you'll get the uh, pentagons and sometimes you'll get this. So let's see if we can, there we go. So yeah, now that's one of the other things that's interesting here is you do get multiple stable states in the, uh, in the um, and actually, you know what? This one is flat, isn't it? We did get the flat faces. There we go, the pentagons are flat. So we did successfully make a uh, dodecahedron. But yeah, the, as you've seen here is you'll get multiple stable states. If I unlock the, these vertices and then let it, nope, it didn't. <laughs> this isn't one of the multiple stable states, but yeah, you will get uh, different different vertex counts. Sometimes you'll get different uh, stable states. For example, 16 here is a multiple stable states. You have this one with the two square holes in it, and then you have this with the four triangles here. And so you can see they arrange themselves differently. And each time it's, sometimes it's one, sometimes it's the other one. But anyway, let's go back to the 12. And so one of the other th cool things I added on this is dividing up, uh, dividing, subdividing. And so I called it stellating and tessellating. And so the, the, what I'm calling stellating is I'm creating a point in the center of each recognized face. And so I'll show you that. And so there we go. And so as you see, we get a 32 sided thingy here. And if we turn off the tertiary, what you can see is a basically a 30 sided 
um, if if you've used D and D dice and you got the rare set with the 30 sided. So this is kind of like that, but again, like with the uh, dodecahedron, they're not flat. They're not perfectly flat, so it's kind of cool there. But the other thing we can do if we go back to 12 is we can tessellate. And so if we tessellate it, it goes, basically it divides each edge. Instead of finding a point in the center of the space, it divides each edge into two. So let's go back to 12 again, and we'll do it again just for the fun of it. So if you watch here, see it divides each one. And then obviously it projects them back out onto the sphere. And so you get yet another cool kind of shape and so if you can you can see here you can see the uh the 20 sider the icosahedron here you can see that the blue triangles of the 20 sider and then this has been subdivided up and you can even do this again you can stellate this and it does start to get <laughs> it does start to get pretty uh painful for the for the uh calculating and rendering and all that stuff when you do when you go really far with it but uh, yeah, we can go like this, and we can even turn off the back faces and turn off the face rendering, which is interesting in its own different way. So that's the other cool thing about these, these different rendering modes is that there are different ways of viewing the same, the same thing, and some of them make it easier to see. So let's go back to number 24, which is kind of interesting in its own way. And let's see, do we have, I think it's because we have lines locked. Let's try that, there we go. Okay, so this is the natural position that 24 falls into. And it's kind of cool because I think this is the first one where you actually get the six-sided uh, sort of form. You'll get a six-sided you know, six sides opposite of each other, obviously, as you can see here. And, but what I was going to show you was that there are different ways to view the faces. So here's another one that makes it easier to visualize, which is kind of cool. So yeah, it basically creates triangles to the center with each one, but it looks like a flower. And so I actually call it floral mode or flower mode. And we can do different numbers What's cool is you can do different numbers of vertices, and like I said, they some of them show up uh, are easier to visualize, should I say? <laughs> some of them are are much easier to visualize in certain modes. So this one, which is really cool, I I kind of like this one um, with number twenty three, is you'll find that you get this blue line around the equator, or you basically it's not obviously not always around the equator but there you get a blue line that travels all the way around like every time you get this blue line and it just <laughs> every time it settles into that there's it's just fun stuff like that was, which is why I like this and so we can go back to the faces here and I believe there are some other cool here we go number 22 you get some cool little forms here so if we look at this as a regular I mean, it's, it doesn't look like anything special when you look at it like this, but then when you go back to this mode, you can see some pretty cool patterns. So you can see this here, you can see these like this, and you know, that sort of thing. But anyway, I just wanted to show you guys that. You're welcome to explore it on your own, and I'll show you some of the other features here. I actually put in a help screen to, because I just had, <laughs> I kind of went nuts with the features, so we'll show you some of the other ones. So in order to help clear up the mess with the back, we have, I made what's called a Z-wall. And so it basically just, you know, is just an invisible wall that, that, uh, that creeps back and forward. You can make it go forward and backward to sink the shape into it to kind of help you see the depth of it. And one of the other things I did was I added 3D cross-eyed version. So for those of you who are able to do it, and if you're, if you're looking at it now like that, uh, <laughs> you're probably gonna hate me for doing this, but I'm gonna move. You can move them closer together and farther apart to get easier cross-eyed viewing. For those of you who don't know how to do that, I have another video that will be uploaded 
that shows you how to do that stuff that gives you some hints and tips on on the 3d cross-eyed viewing but yeah this is um let me see we've got you can hide the back faces so there's that and that helps to to uh you know especially with when you get higher numbers like you know 150 vertices it's really <laughs> it can get really messy trying to find stuff like that you know but uh yeah let's go back to 24 and we can mess around with this and see what other kind of shapes we can find i think 18 or 17 now see this is cool too you get the you get just these two points opposite each other and so it's it's fun because you'll find different different uh, divisions like you'll find the twos you'll find points where there's four you know basically you'll find like a tetrahedron type of division and you'll find like the same patterns over and over you'll find the the icosahedron and the, the tetrahedron and stuff uh, as the subdivisions of this so there's one where there's just one side it's like a death star huh it's just got the one side and we've got 18 i think it's either 16 or 18 that does some really cool stuff too let's see here and i will show you guys some more visual there we go there's 17 that's that's one of them now if you look at it in the wireframe it looks cool too and you get the holes through it it's like a circus thing or something um i love this flower mode though for this you can discover some pretty cool stuff with it but yeah it wasn't 16 i think it was the 17 that i remembered looking really cool and 14 looks really cool too there we go so you don't get any of the medium lines you only get the longs and shorts and so one of the other things that i added in here and you probably want to turn down your sound <laughs> for this but i added in a sound mode and I think what we'll try is I'm going to try, we're going to go back to the 12. And so before I do this, what I want to explain is the sound mode, there's two different ones. There's one that does the edges and there's one that does the faces. And so it plays pitches based on the length of an edge or a face. And so it plays relative pitches for each of the different for each of the different things and so it's kind of interesting to watch and what we're going to do is we're going to turn this to lower repulsion and we're going to turn on the let me turn down the desktop sounds here and we'll see if whoops <laughs> there we go and we'll see if we can get it to uh to do some sounds so that's just the there we go so now as you notice it's playing different sounds and it's kind of ugly and so the cool thing is that for different shapes you end up with you know really neat uh really neat sounds and for some of them are really ugly and for some of them they're really beautiful so we'll go back to 12. and as you see they're all they're all in tune because all the lines are the same length so it's interesting too because you can hear how close depending on how good your pitch is, but uh, <laughs> your your uh, selectivity or whatever sensitivity to pitch changes. But yeah, you can tell how accurate these are based on... <laughs> there we go. Based on the, uh, you know, the pitch differences. So we'll check out 14 because that should be two tones. And that sounds really cool. I like that. And 24 sounds pretty cool too. Let's go up to 24. Sounds like a beehive. <laughs> now you can do edges and then we have faces. So because sometimes you'll have different lengths of edges, but they're all like, you know, you have two different types of edges but you have isosceles triangles and so all the triangles are actually the same area and so it's interesting to listen to the different the face sounds versus the versus the uh the edge sounds like on that one there you go you get two different tones again so you get apparently these and these are probably different these ones on the end and yeah 
there we go. But the faces, I think the faces on the end and the faces in the middle are probably different, different sizes, slightly different sizes. But anyway, that was what I wanted to show you. You are more than welcome to download it and see what you can come up with. If you come up with any cool configurations, let me know. And uh, yeah, let's... <laughs> there we go. If you come up with any cool configurations, let me know. Uh, leave some comments. What did you think? Um, if you want to mess around with source code or whatever, you're more than welcome to. Like I said, there's a git and all that stuff. So anyway, we'll see you in the next video. Later.